on this episode of Still Loading, Pigsy's coming for you. Hey guys, it's Josh, and welcome back to this episode of Still Loading. And to round off uh, Halloween in October and spoop or spooky-tober, or whatever the hell you want to call it, to round off this month, uh, the scary game we are going to be covering is Manhunt for the PS2. And to help me out with this, my friend Mike has just, uh, not my brother Mike, a different, there's too many people with the same name. So Mike, say hi to everyone. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming along. My first for podcast. Uh, yes, we'll yes. Let's see how this goes. Uh, well, it, you were the one that recommended this game, and so I felt it only fitting that you would join me for this episode, because there's a lot to unpack with it, to say the least. Yeah, definitely. I love this game so much. I don't know if that's a, something you want to admit. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. No, uh, so for those who don't know, Manhunt is a stealth-based action game. That doesn't make any sense. It's a stealth. It's a stealth-based horror game. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's a stealth. Horror. It's a stealth horror game. It was released in. I should. Oh my god! I I completely blanked on it. Is that uh, November two thousand three. Was it? Okay. Yeah, like Thank God you're covering my ass on this one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you're right. November two thousand and three. Uh, uh, in North America, November nineteenth. Yeah, I was about twelve or thirteen. I would have been fourteen at the time. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this game is something else and i don't mean that in a bad way i mean that in like it's just it's fucked up oh, it's yeah. a, it's a fucked up game <laughs> it's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> uh so in your opinion so let's first start off with this and before we go into the gameplay and everything let's start off with your personal experiences with it experiences okay. with it so when did you start playing it and what was your first uh, impression of it i played this probably very soon after it came out so i played it at a very young age um, me and my friend Justin, we would just play this game nonstop, all the time. Um, there was a very few amount of games where we actually played this much. Like, it was just from front to back, over and over. We loved it so much. But, I mean, at first it was just, like, one of those things where we would play it, but it would kind of, like, freak us out a little bit just from being, like, like stupid kids. But um, it's it's just so tense, and, like, n- barely any other game gave me that feeling. It. I could see why. Um, the game, even though I'm, I played this, you know, well, what we just said, two thousand three, so it's yeah, fifteen yeah. years later. Wow, actually, this works out surprisingly close to the fifteen year anniversary of it, because we're yeah, yeah. this is going to be Definitely. coming out uh, the very last week weekend of October, and the game was released like two weeks later, and like, yeah, so yeah. it's almost that. Wow, that's actually perfect. So it's the fifteenth anniversary. Go oh, figure. Happy I know, right? Uh, so the game is ba- the, the, the plot of it is you play, you control a character named James Earl Cash, right. uh, who is a death row prisoner forced to participate in a series of snuff films for an underground director and former pr- film producer, Lionel Starkweather, though you don't yeah. know him that as no, that in the beginning. you don't know him at first, it's just the director. Uh, just the director, yeah. 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 And Let's go right into it. Let's talk about what made this game so fucked up and what made this game so interesting at the yeah. same time. So you are supposed to you supposedly die in the beginning only to find out that you've been resurrected. Yeah, they give you the a lethal injection but and um, you it's just not wake that up. lethal. Yeah, apparently not. It's just a, a sedative. But and so then you wake up and you have to you're told you have an earpiece in that you didn't put there. And this guy named just known at the time as the director right. is basically trying to uh, get you to do all these horrible. He's he wants you to kill people. Yeah, uh, what well, in the most your violent? Yeah, promising your freedom, and later on you find out he has kidnapped your family. Yep, uh, and for their freedom as well. And you get the game encourages you to kill people in the most violent ways possible yeah, yeah. you get more yeah. points for more violent it is and the way the mechanic works is that you sneak up behind an enemy and you have a type of found object whether in the first weapon of the game i think you even told me it's, yeah, a, it's plastic a plastic bag. bag yeah what a way to start the game out oh yeah exactly it, just, it takes no time to uh 
to kick in. And, and he puts just, it right on front just, street. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, so you go up behind enemy, you hold extra square, and um, you either get a, a gray cursor, yellow, and then red for the most vicious. And you the, that, the color of the cursor changes depending on how long you have held the button right, in, yeah, essentially. Yeah. So the, I guess the longer you hold it, the more satisfying the, uh, the kill is going to be. I don't know if satisfying is the right word. That's the right say. word for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> no. um, so... And it it really like it encourages right off the bat. They tell you the longer you hold it in, the more violent the kill is going to yeah, be. And yeah. so the first kill, when you do that with a plastic bag, you not just like snuff the guy out by suffocating him. You like no, you can, wrap his head up and then punch and then, him repeatedly yeah, yeah, in the head till it's the plastic bag is just bloody on the <laughs> yep, inside. Yep. It really. Yeah. Wh- whoa. It's a great it's, way. It's to a start little the gratuitous. Game. That is, yeah. But I'm not complaining. Uh, no, of course not. I know I'm not complaining. It's it. I could definitely see why people didn't like. Thought it was so yeah. controversial. Like yeah, it yeah, definitely yeah. deserves the moniker it got. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I love it. So then you, the game progresses on, and you play through the game by having more and more different types of stealth kills that you can get. Yep. And towards the end, it gets a little bit more actiony. I noticed. Yeah, unfortunately, it kind of gets more into like shooter territory and more action based. But, you know, that's just kind of how it is. I mean, that's why the first half of the game, I feel, is so much better. It's just because it's more stealthy, and that's where the game more shines. I would yeah. agree. When I Now, granted, you have beaten this game before. I have not. I yeah. played this game about an hour to two hours, and I watched a, a, someone replay through it and just yeah, kind of... Yeah go through the rest of it and i was really impressed with the game design aspects Mm -hmm. of it and it was it was weird how much of a juxtaposition it was compared to the uh, beginning half of the game like it was the beginning half was so stealth based and the second half was just guns blazing like don't give a fuck exactly (laughs) yeah um which is why i love the first half so much more i would agree um, i think it's definitely better i mean the same the enemies are really cool they still have amazing dialogue throughout the entire game but that middle portion is just way too much action instead of, you know, where, where I feel the game actually shines in stealth. And, well, I understand why they did it to a degree because when you have the same types of gameplay mechanics over and over and over again, it gets a little repetitive. Right. So you want, always want to make sure that you are... Uh, you know, you're doing. You're. You want to. You. They want to change it up, and that was a yeah, they, yeah. way they decided to do it. Even though it wasn't great, but no, they decided the best, to do it. But maybe at the time it wasn't as bad because de- definitely the gunplay has aged poorly. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I still uh, love it. So let's talk about some more specific aspects yeah. of the gameplay before we go jump into the story. Uh, so what are the, some of the different types of weapons you can get from what I remember playing? You get like glass shivs, yeah. uh, baseball bats. Right. Um, I saw later on you get chainsaws mm-hmm. and what else, what else is there besides um, the guns, of course. Yeah. But, well, I mean, in the beginning, it's more of like the disposable stuff, which is the green sphere that you'll find, which is the shiv, the, the bag. And um, there's also yellow, which is just throwable, which I wouldn't consider really weapons. Oh, yeah, because um, there's different classes. The green yeah. sphere, as we call it, is, are like single-use ones. Yeah, single-use. And yeah. then you can get different ones that are like multiple-use yeah, or so like indefinite. The next one would be blue, which has a blackjack, which is pretty much, I guess, just like a shorter like baseball bat, some sort of blunt object. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite was the sickle. Which is like it's just you know <laughs> the curved blade. You get a machete later on. Yeah, you get a machete, which is really cool. But um, the sickle had one. I think it was the yellow execution where you would just from behind you would just shove it through their legs from behind, oh. and then you would just rip oh. out. And oh. <laughs> yeah, and it just like like the sound is just like it's just a bunch of just like just thick wet. Yeah, you know, hitting Why the ground are you like using that description. <laughs> it's oh. the best one there is. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, but, I I would never really think thick and wet as a description for a kill. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's just like I guess it's just whatever spilled out underneath. Oh just... my god! <laughs> yeah, no, this game is outrageously violent. Ex- oh, yeah. Even especially for a uh, especially for a PS2 game, especially oh, for, for sure. any game, yeah. it doesn't matter what generation. It's I feel from. like the most violent of games was on like the PS2 era, so. Well, it's weird. Like, you'd be surprised. So, don't get me wrong. It is violent, especially the gratuit, like the almost like it's like almost like murder porn yeah, <laughs> in yeah, a way. Yeah. Um, but it, I would, 
I could I could totally do an episode eventually on like the history of violence in video games, but mm. I a much better podcast than mine, Retronauts, already covered like two three years ago did an episode on it right they covered it pretty extensively one of the first instances of like games being people being pissed off about violence in games there was an old game like an arcade game i want to say from the 70s called death race and okay. you just ran people over oh yeah that's yeah. all it was yeah which now you know grand theft auto and like yeah, other games yeah. it's, it's almost comedic right but it's not and but back in the 70s no one had ever like you're controlling a car and you're it's going to cause violence and stuff it's weird how that's what it was then but and it, if you think about it like a short like 30 like not even it was like 25 some odd years later 25 yeah. 26 years later you have manhunt where you're just like slitting people's throats <laughs> and like disemboweling yeah. them and oh, shit. exactly i mean like it's kind of kind of sucks now because like i mean i not to get too like off topic but i i'm kind of tired of the whole you know the negative the negative feeling of like violence without context in games like people always want context now like they want like like meaning behind it and stuff like that where it's like you just not need it do you you do you see that do you hear a lot of that type of thing yeah yeah like it's like people now i hear a lot of um uh, just like other commentators or stuff like that. Not, not to give them shit or anything, but it's just like, it's just, just a different taste. But it's like, you know, say like like the Tomb Raider game or something like that, saying that the new Tomb Raider is too violent because like she just relentlessly murders. And it's just like, I don't know. I miss that. You know, I like that feeling of... Of murder? No, just <laughs> no. like the, the, you don't need context. Like it's. No, I would agree. I think it depends, in my opinion at least, I think it really depends on what, like... I guess it is the context, but like, so for example, like when it's a game like Manhunt, you already have the context there of it being like, you know, it's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And when it was needlessly violent, it was almost in a comedic aspect versus in a realistic aspect. Tomb Raider, while I love the series, it goes a little bit over the top with the realism of it. Like, I never really had an issue with how many people she's killed, but like at the same time, I did. I remember even playing like the newest one, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and just being kind of surprised at how much murder was happening because it didn't feel. I think it. I think a lot of it has to be the tone. So, for example, mm-hmm. like Lara Croft as a person is always preaching about being a good person. Like, don't be yeah. basically don't be a dick, even though she says it much more eloquently and in a really awesome British accent. <laughs> um, but she she's constantly fighting for good. But when in fact, there's a specific moment which I liked in terms of character and story, but it, but it, it was weird because it. I don't know how to describe. It. So there's a moment in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and this isn't any spoilers, um, but where she loses her shit about something. I won't. That would be a spoiler if I said what it was. Right. And the look in her eyes looks like she, a demon's possessed her or something, mm-hmm. and she just goes off on every bad guy near her. And it's it's actually, like, she doesn't get like super brutal with them, but just the tone to completely change. And I was able to accept that a lot more right. because she lost her shit. Okay. But through the rest of the game, it always felt so weird because she always seemed so happy-go-lucky right after she murdered like 30 people. Right. So when you, I think I would have less of an issue with, I don't have any issue actually really with it, right. but I think in terms of a objectively, I would have like, it's not even just in terms of preference of how much violence was in it, mm-hmm. but objectively it really doesn't match the tone to it. Okay. Like doom is an ultra violent game, right. but, and it's very serious, but the tone is completely ridiculous. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I don't mind violence for the sake of violence, but when the tone of the game isn't for the sake of violence, it it it, it creates a weird juxtaposition. I can see what you, you know mean. what I mean. Yeah. No, I can so see that. like in that, like uh, what's a what's it, what was a classic game that was like known for its like over the top violence, like Serious Sam and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. But, like those are ridiculous games. Like, like State of Emergency. Yeah, violence for the <laughs> sake of violence. Yeah, like yeah. it's. And no issues with that. I mean, I can understand why people do if they don't like violence. Fair enough. You know, right, it's yeah, each yeah, their yeah. own. But like when you, it's weird when a game is preaching one thing, but the, but but the character is doing the complete opposite, and yeah, not that makes sense. And it doesn't have any bearing on story. Uh, if you want a game that does really well with that, like uh, you ever play The Last of Us? Yeah, I love Last of Us. The Last of Us, it they really question it, like the and. 
in Tomb Raider, they have the throwaway quote, how many people have you killed, Lara? And the, like, oh, you're not so different from me. It's a really dumb cliche, which if done well is a good cliche, but right. it's not always like last of us did it so well because spoiler alert for last of us, just get letting everyone know for those who haven't played it three, two, one spoilers. Uh, at the very end of the game, you know, you find out that the only way to cure the virus is to kill Ellie. And so Joel goes on a spree and kills everyone in the hospital to get yeah. Ellie back. And that's completely justified. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's an awful person for doing it, mm -hmm. but you understand the character motivation and the tone of the game matches it too. And I love the last of us just because at the very end, after he does that, you find out you were the villain the whole time, which right, is like yeah. such a, especially because at the very end where Ellie doesn't know what's happening. And she, she's like, Joel promised me that you like that this, like there was a, there's, there was another way. He's like, yeah, I promise. And he lies to her face. Yeah. Yeah. And so if oh you had my the choice, God, you would have, uh, yeah, you would have, he yeah. he'd rather doom humanity than lose her. Yeah, which is okay. like so sweet, but at the same time so messed up. Yeah, God, I love that, that game. Was awesome. It's a great but... game, but no, yeah, we we got off track yeah, a little bit. Uh, so yeah, like we said, it's a stealth based cycle. Oh, according to Wikipedia, it's a psychological horror game. I can see that. Which I yeah, especially yeah. with the the thing. Now I will say what the game does smart, like uh, what I think was really smart was when those kills happen, you're not controlling the kills. It's like. You go up, you execute the kill, and then it goes to a cutscene of uh, Cash committing the awful kill. Yeah, yeah, it was it was always awesome watching them. You, like over and over, it was still cool. Like even if it was repetitive, it was still cool. Like, I don't. Time. I see. I never minded that because like I love the Jack and Daxter games. If you ever play the first Jack and Daxter, every time you collect like the power cells, which are like the primary thing you're supposed to collect in that game, they do a dance. Every, every time. single time. And there's like a hundred of them in that game. Oh, God. Never got old to me. Don't know why. Um, but no. So, all right. I think that's that's a good, like, overview of the gameplay, I want to yeah, say. Like, I mean, we, like, I guess to go back to weapons, um, like, the third class would be the red, which was, like, the Oh, yeah, sorry. We completely and, got off topic. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but a baseball bat, um, a few others that I just kind of came blocking out. But the thing about those is... Um, if you just had the baseball bat, like I would say, like in the first two chapters, which was white trash and fueled by hate, there it was just you pretty much only had the metal baseball bat, and it made the stealth so hard because they would hear the metal clanking off the skull. <laughs> That's another thing, just to talk about the th what enemies you fight yeah. are the most fucked up gangs you'll ever hear about. So yeah, yeah. the first uh, gang you fight is a bunch of white nationalist neo Nazis. Yeah, the skins. Uh, and you fight them in a scrapyard, or sorry, yeah, it's no, like a, sorry, you fight those guys later on. You first just fight generic thugs uh, yeah, of a, a gang, gang called the Hoods, yeah. Um, and yeah, first, and then you fight the white nationalists, yeah, yeah. And then you fight uh, schizophrenic psychopaths, yep. Uh, the smileys, I think. The smileys, yeah. And then I, rem I thought there was one group that you killed. Where it was like a bunch of like. Was it transgender people? Which yeah. is really fucked up to think about. Like, like, yeah, like, yeah. like that's like yeah. they're villains. They're, like um, it's awful. Uh, what was it? The innocents. I think that's what. Oh no! The these these aren't. They they weren't. Oh thank God they didn't go there. It's not trans, but they are pedophiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are. That's what they were. Uh, a satanic Latino occultist and perverted pedophiles yeah, called yeah, the yeah. innocents. Yeah. Yeah, this game really like yeah. took aim at a lot of random yeah. stuff. Like really just the trying thing, to offend these enemies were one, like one of the main highlights of manhunt just because of the awful stuff they would say to you like and it was it's it's wonderful like you'd just be like waiting in like the shadows and they would just you know be saying awful stuff to each other and to you like and it's, it's so it's like funny but it's awful especially the parts with the skins they say some crazy shit I didn't you we were joking around beforehand of like what could be the tagline and it was something yeah, like yeah. it was like white power yeah, or something yeah, like um, that. I think when I got caught because I played it recently before before this and um I was getting chased because I got spotted and the guy was like screaming at me he's like feel the power of the white man oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> that's and, um, it's, it's crazy it's they they really like they did not hold their punches like they no, threw they didn't. racist shit racist. they threw there's sexist like, shit. there's some like homophobic stuff in there too um but you know it's it's all awful stuff um so a little bit just interesting uh to talk about like the development of the game 
what's interesting enough what's or interestingly enough some of the developers who made the game people who worked on it didn't like working on it they were actually oh, yeah, very yeah. uncomfortable with what the director of the game wanted them to do um, was that the case was it like the director wanted this and then the people working on it were like like the developers are kind of just like oh this makes me feel like shit like, yeah like it well and i i can't find there was a quote somewhere that i was reading and they they mentioned that oh here hold on here it is um a former rockstar employee admitted that the game almost caused immunity in the company the team had already weathered plenty of controversy over gta 3 and vice city and were no strangers to it but manhunt felt different mm-hmm. with gta we always had the excuse that the gameplay was untethered was untethered you never had to hurt anyone that wasn't that wasn't a bad guy in one of the missions you could complete you could play completely ethically if you wanted and the game was a parody anyway so lighten up so that was why they felt uncomfortable because while gta they were used to it but manhunt the explicit purpose of it was violent <laughs> it was like a it, different kind of offensive to them I yes guess. Um, so, all right, let's move on to the story then. So right. we already talked a little bit about the plot of it, how, you know, you play as, uh, was it James Earl Cashman? Yeah, James right. Earl Cash. James Earl Cash, and you're a death row inmate. Uh, right. You don't actually get you get killed. You're given a second chance, quote unquote, of freedom by this guy named director, and you just have mm-hmm. to basically make snuff films yeah, for yeah, him yeah. by killing people. Yep. So you fight your way through different as cash you fight your way through different gangs just kind of following along with what uh the what director's the director telling wants, you to yeah. do um and every time you think you get out he has a group of uh mercenaries called the ward no sorry the Not, cerberus cerberus that's it uh a private security expert called cerberus yeah. kidnap you and move you to the next thing and only to yep. find out that you have more to do and of course, you find out after that that your family has been kidnapped, and you so you don't even have any choice. And at the end of you going through it, after saving your whole your whole family, mm-hmm. he still kills him he anyway. Still kills him, yeah. <laughs> it's a, a fucked great up feeling. Dude. That is right. Oh my god! Especially like, playing through that, it's like, oh great, save my family. No, only <laughs> for nothing. Like the game, really, like it's a big fuck you to the player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I. In terms of story, I like that. I like I that, that it gives you motivation. Or like, you made me did all of this, yeah, do all of this yep. for nothing. Exactly. Um, it makes you feel like shit the whole time, which is awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Well, it's like well and he, make, well. he makes you, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, when I didn't get to this part playing it, but I mm-hmm. watched the cut, I watched someone play it. The cutscene is like you, you, he walks in, Cash walks into a house, and on the TV, he watches his family die. Yeah. It's yep. really messed yeah, up. It's brutal. Uh, so then, yeah, so you discover, uh, uh, after watching their deaths on a TV set up for him by the director, Cash vows revenge as the director coldly tells him, I'm all the family you need now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after again, facing the innocence in the graveyard and a manufacturing cash is forced to face off is what is supposed to be the final scene of the film. So basically the director tells him to do one more thing. He does it. And then he goes after the director. Yeah. Yep. Ends up his name is Lionel. What a dumb name! Yeah, right. What a it's such dumb a name. Fucking name. Uh, but you end up there is a, a, a subplot. Sorry to anyone named Lionel. <laughs> Lionel Richie. There's one guy out there. Well, like, Lionel Richie. Guys. Oh yeah, the, yeah. the singer. But uh, there's a subplot with like a reporter then that shows up yeah, where yeah, yeah. she like rescues you somehow because um, she's on to the whole thing that yeah, Lionel is doing. Yeah, yeah. I forget uh, her name, but um, I'll no, actually, try to look it up real quick. I read something that she's actually um, has links to Liberty City. She does. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Meanwhile, Stark with orders the chief for the city. No, 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 no. Uh, let's see if I can find where it's at. Nope, can't find where it's That's at. That's all right. Also, uh, Lionel has ties to Los Santos. I've yes. Also read. Um, no, yeah, it, it connects to the GTA universe, yeah, which is which really, is really cool. it's a cool little like subplot. But so basically, the female, the reporter, she kind of helps you find out where uh, Starkweather or Lionel is yeah, at, yeah, yeah. and you go after him. And that's pretty much the final mission of the game right. is where you're hunting down the director or Lionel yeah. to avenge your family to kind of help this woman out who helped you out because yeah. she's looking for the next big scoop for her career. It was just kind of a sick and twisted way to go about it, but whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't. Yeah. I don't. She's her heart's in doing it for the wrong reasons, yeah. but it's in the gotta right do place. What you gotta do. Um, and so you go to the mansion, and that's where you fight the final boss, sort of Pigsy, the love of my life. Pigsy. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell your girlfriend. Oh yeah. Um, so Pigsy is one interesting uh, 
character. He's yeah. Wikipedia describes him as a mentally disturbed, chainsaw wielding psychopath who wears a pig's head as a mask and was normally kept chained up in Starkweather's attic, but he breaks free. And by him breaking free, it allows Cash to escape, and then you have mm-hmm. to end up fighting him. And I think the biggest thing that I noticed with Pigsy is that he's got a big ass dick. Big hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and you guys think I'm kidding. I'm dead serious. When you're fighting him, one, it's terrifying because it's something out of Saw. Yeah, yeah. Two, you're in a creepy attic mm-hmm. running around, like trying to like hide in shadows and stab him. Yep. Um, oh, we didn't even explain how the stealth mechanic worked. You hide in shadows and enemies can't see you. And yeah, as yeah. they walk by, you stab yeah. them. There you go. We got it. We got it. <laughs> um, but no, as he walks by, you see this big thing just swinging yeah, right yeah. in between his and on legs. PlayStation or PS2, it's very pixelated. But you know it's there because it's dangling far <laughs> beyond his knees. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, horrifying. Yeah. I'm like, why is that even necessary? And what's weird is the rating doesn't even have that. I mean, Like nudity? It doesn't even mention nudity yeah, in I the rating. I didn't even I don't see think that. so. I don't think it, it might, but I'm not sure. But I, I swear that's his dick. I mean, if it's not, it's be, right? it, I would think so. What else so. would be there? Just clothes, clothes. Like, like he's where he's like pulling a ninety thing and having his like sweatshirt there. tied around his waist, <laughs> and you see the sleeve <laughs> yeah, dangling yeah. in between there. I don't know. Uh, basically, you have to uh, sneak sneak around, stab Pixie with broken uh, with, shards, with the, uh, glass shards. shards. You got like three and then times or so. After three times, he runs away, and then you have to lure him above this like uh, grate. And uh, for him to like fall to like land on and fall through and kill himself yeah, that yeah, way, pretty much. and then you open up the door, fight the director, and when you try to do that, he sends some soldiers out. You kill the soldiers, mm-hmm. then you finally fight the director, and then the game's over. Yeah, and that's yeah. pretty much the plot of the game. Pigsy yeah. though is like the most insane aspect yeah. of that entire. In game. the middle of the game, you see the rabbit. But she was kind of like he was weird. Wasn't he the head of Cerberus or something like that? He was uh, the I think the Smileys, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, but he might. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But um, you think that's like weird? Like you know, like oh, this psychopath, the rabbit, and then you meet Pigsy at the end. That's it's just like a whole another level. If you guys get a chance, look up a picture of Pigsy. He's kind of terrifying. Oh, not yeah, even yeah, kind yeah. of like legitimately yeah. horrifying to look and, at. And like he just like. He just oinks at you the whole and, time. Yeah, and like this, since it's PS2, it actually has good sound, so it's not like like yeah. a sixteen bit digitized version. It, yep. it it sounds like someone's just oinking at you, oh, it's, and oh, it's you hear the chainsaw going. It's mm-hmm. it's it is scary terrifying. as hell. It is scary Especially, as hell. Like, just the way that game is, like you're just hiding in the shadows, and like they like, squint at you, and like mm-hmm. you, you don't know if they're gonna see your you heart or not. rates going because you don't know if they're looking like, at you. Oh my uh, god, yeah. um, it's terrifying. So. Any final t- uh, thoughts on the gameplay itself, or the sorry, the story and gameplay before we yeah. move on to just some interesting side facts about the game? Yeah, I actually have major beef with the one, the one out level. I think mm-hmm. it's at the end of uh, fueled by hate. It's the you know the skins mm-hmm. like in the yeah, like junkyard and stuff. You basically there's a crane and you have to fill it with gas, right? And you're slowly you know, like you're slowly moving with this gas can while there's like enemies coming at you and stuff like that. And then you eventually you pour the gas in the the crane and like it's all good, right? You just you're, I think you're just supposed to move this like refrigerator with like the magnetic okay, crane. Okay. But then they just they throw like six like six enemies at you, shooting you with nail guns while you're inside the crane. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pick up the refrigerator and you're supposed to like swing it at them and then drop it on them. But everything's so delayed. And, like, it's just, like, it's just, the mechanic is just such shit. So, like, every time, so you'll move, try to move the crane to the left, and it'll yeah. take, like, and a then, couple frames and to actually move. as soon as you get to, like, where the, and it's pretty much top down, too. So, as soon as you get to where you need to drop the refrigerator, the guy moves, and you're just still getting shot by nails. And it's just so fucking frustrating. <laughs> like, I, there was, it, as much as it's weird to say this, I like moments of games like that that are, like, so outrageously frustrating because it makes like it makes it that much more like like that the feeling that much better when you finally accomplish it that's true i've I've been playing super metroid recently and i got so mad at one second i threw the controller on the ground like so hard i was afraid i broke it because it's an original super nintendo controller thank god those things are made out of like fucking titanium yeah 
Actually, but, uh, I think I broke a controller playing Manhunt when I was a kid. Really? I think I t- I had a belt, and I, I I apparently I don't know why, but I thought it was a great idea to get mad and just whip the controller with a belt. What? <laughs> and um, you've been playing that game too much. Yeah, apparently. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure you kill people with belts in that too. I I don't remember anything about a belt. Like it would be no? cool though. I mean. Well, no, there's the, the strangling wire. That was the one wire, of the, yeah, the wire. Yeah. You got that That's too. That's a great one. That was, the sound on that one was nuts. Why? Oh, uh. I remember like very like minute details of this game. Since I I've mean, been it's one of it your favorite years ones. And, years, like. and just so everyone knows, in case you're one, Mike's not crazy. Yeah, he just <laughs> likes horror yeah, games. You're it's, about my it's, side, it's, it's he's he's a hundred percent fine. <laughs> I've just record. I've been in this room with him for like forty minutes to an hour. I'm still alive. We're all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, so what else? Did, was there anything else you wanted to talk about though with the gameplay or the storyline? Um, I guess not necessarily. Um, I can't really think of any other gameplay. I mean, besides, I, we touched on like the gunplay being kind of like janky, a little yeah. janky. But there was kind of some good moments, like with like a double barrel shotgun or something. And um, I think eventually, if they got close, you can just aim right up. And um, but that's like, the only time. Oh, you know what though? The like the fist fighting. That's like that's a little difficult. It's difficult, but like I kind of appreciated it in a way because mm-hmm. like the first, like in the first mission, he drops you onto that basketball court, and he's like, you know, he's like, you you know, fight this dude. But the it's like it just kind of feels like what an actual fight would kind of be, where it's like sloppy. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's a sloppy, yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. shit show. The first, the first, you're talking about the first fist fight? Or? Yeah, like in the basketball court. It's, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just like, you know, um, but it's just like, I don't know, it's it's just kind of, it's really visceral and like real feeling. You know what's really weird about it too? Like every time you you like, like beat the shit out of someone like with your fist in that yeah. game, he, at the very end he's always like, I have a family. I'm like, why are you trying to kill <laughs> yeah, me then? Yeah, yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Like, it's it's it is trying to make you feel guilty. Like one that game just fucks with your head, man. It really does. Yeah. Um so sure. all right, let's move on to the last thing I want to talk about. Oh, well, actually, before I go into the last thing I want to talk about, is there any did you like the music at all? I don't notice I didn't notice the music Honestly, at all. It I, was meant more for atmosphere you know than what, like though? it was like the atmospheric sound effects that were really cool. I did like those, but I know they there's nothing like like really rememberable about you know. Yeah. Well, other than it being atmospheric, like yeah, I it think it's creepy. good sound design more yeah, than like good that's music. What I would say. Like, so I wouldn't say there's like actual good like tracks or anything like that. But. Yeah, no, but the sound design's really good. Uh, like when you walk across glass and like when like yeah. Pigsy's noise and like all the different sound effects of all the yeah. different kills. I think the sound design was really well done. Yeah, just no music, which is fine. Like it's meant to be atmospheric, like right, horror right. movies. In horror or anything in general isn't known for its music. Yeah. I mean, you get some exceptions, you know, the Halloween, Halloween theme, theme and stuff like, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, music isn't really like a big take in this. It's more of just like the atmospheric sort of background. Um, but um, but no. no so, uh, I would say though, I feel like not to go off too crazily. No, but go for it. It's um, this is why I love Rockstar games so much. Yeah, is because they're like just their characters. They're very flawed and they're vulnerable, you know, like, sorry, I sneezed for those who heard that. (laughs) Um, but and I've talked to you so many times about how much I love Max Payne. Yeah. Yeah. It's because he's like a vulnerable, he's not like the hero. Like like anti-heroes. I love anti-heroes. I love when they're just like, you can't always just side with them. You're like, oh man, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I mean, like Max Payne three, you're just like, you're following him. You're like, dude. What the fuck are you doing? It, it makes characters <laughs> that much more interesting it when does. they're flawed versus does, like which is what, what if they're just like Superman or something like exactly. that. Exactly, it just makes it way more fun and like that. Those are the stories that always resonated with me, though. I got gotcha. you. So, I just want to shout out to Rockstar, I yeah. guess. No, they like as as much as I'm not a huge fan of their games, I really respect their design philosophies yeah. and like how well and just their design in general. Like they they put their games together so expertly, and that there's so much like care atten- like if you play any rockstar game there's a lot of attention to detail to small minute things that they you don't need to have that level of attention exactly. to detail to yep. and to me that shows that they give a shit that they actually exactly. care about the product yeah. they're putting out and as much as it's not my favorite thing just like the two biggest not like indie i don't i know rockstar is not technically indie they make triple a titles but they yeah. technically don't have allegiance to like right. any of the main developers no, they're not like a ubisoft they're not like, like ubisoft or uh you know ea or mm-hmm. activision they're not they publish and develop their own games exactly yeah. they do some other publishing but um 
they they give a shit a lot about their titles, and I think that that's really admirable. Oh, it because, shows. It shows in every but, one of their titles, maybe except State of Emergency. <laughs> I, I I own it, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, Curse of a Collector, own it, but never oh, play. Yeah, exactly. But no, um, the controversy I want to talk about. The last thing is a controversy surrounding the game, right? Um, and the controversy that I'm going to read, I'm going to try to paraphrase based off of uh, Wikipedia, but basically. The game grew. Uh, the game uh, like had a, a lot of attention drawn to it because of its violent nature. Right. But what really, uh, what really like just put it out, um, like to the mainstream news and stuff. Yeah. The what really just kind of put it like over the top is that there is a. It was tied to a murder, uh, the murder of Stefan Pakira. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. But basically, the controversy surrounded man, surrounding Manhunt reached a peak, and now this is this is directly from Wikipedia. Surrounded a, a peak on July twenty eighth, two thousand four, when the game was linked to the murder of fourteen year old Stefan Pakira by his seventeen year old friend Warren LeBlanc in I'm not even going to try to Leicestershire, England. I, I don't think I pronounced that correctly at all. Uh, basically. I'm going to paraphrase the rest of it from here. Okay. Basically, the uh, LeBlanc, the murderer, had that. It was uh, there was a report released that he had that game in his room, and the way that Stefan was killed or Stefan was killed was very similar to how you would murder someone in that game. Okay, uh, you found out later that he did that. Warren did not own the game; it was actually Stefan that did okay. the mur- the the victim. Uh, yeah, okay, but. It's just crazy that the game caused that much fever pitch like this. Like, it's interesting yeah. that like in general, like the whole violence and video game things have died down a lot. True, but it, there's still remnants of stuff like that going on. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Manhunt deserves the controversy it got. Oh, probably. But I'm happy the game at least exists. Oh yeah, I think it did get banned in the UK. It got banned in Australia, I if, definitely. Oh, Australia. I don't know about the UK, but okay. I'm def- Australia is very strict with their like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. with their rating system. But no, so I guess to wrap this all up, final thoughts, final word on Manhunt. Anything you want to say to just kind of wrap this whole thing up? Um, I mean, this is just one of those games that just will forever live with me because it's just one of those. It's, it's a weird to say it's like a childhood game. But for me, it kind of was because this is kind of what I, you know, started with. Like, I mean, I started with P- like PlayStation One, but like these kind of horror games were the the ones that resonated with me first, just from mm-hmm. watching older people play and stuff. So this, just like along with most Rockstar games, will just always live on with me. But that's pretty much what it is. I mean, I love this game so much. I'll keep playing it forever probably i can tell man i mean every time during this conversation there's a lot of times i'm like how the hell did you remember that specific thing (laughs) um because even games i love i can barely remember like specifics like that i have it's weird like i remember broad strokes of like my feelings about games but i don't remember specifics like hardly ever that's the same with television shows it's the same with movies it's with everything it's so it's such a strange i have it's like a weird selective memory that i have yeah yeah and i got you i think for me it's like i've it's i love i've been playing video games my whole life obviously but it's i know so much about such few games you know what i mean i'm one of i'm kind of one of those where it's like i have my like 20 favorite games that i know like endless amount about so that's kind of where manhunt falls makes sense i'm the opposite where i like to know a lot about every game even though even if it's only i like to know a lot about games but that generally ends up being a little about individual games yeah which is admirable dude i I don't know about that i love it like i'm always so interested like just hearing anything all so, the weird ran- useless yeah. i annoy the shit out of people at work with my uh vi- random video game trivia <laughs> <laughs> i bet i do anyway yeah but. i mean i bet my girlfriend's tired of hearing about max Payne. so yeah yeah i've explained the whole plot to her <laughs> i've tried i've tried to explain plots of games to my wife and she just doesn't have any of it she's just like i'll finish and she's like I didn't understand any of what you just said. I'm like, how much did you listen to? Uh, maybe about 10% of it. I'm like, thanks, hon. Love <laughs> yeah, you, too. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, <laughs> but no. But... And uh, I guess overall, my impression was I, I was impressed by it. Mm-hmm. For a game from 2004, the mechanics were, like, really ahead of its time. Yeah. Uh, the stealth bait, it, the, its stealth mechanics still hold up while its shooting mechanics really don't. Uh, Storyline was interesting enough because it was, like, a plot of a Saw film. It was very simple, 
but you just yeah. wanted to know it. The simple mystery of like why is this happening to Cash right. has made it all the worthwhile to continue playing. Yeah, yeah. For uh, sure. So I re- I really liked that, and I just I I, I like I thought the gameplay was good as much as yeah. I disliked all the the murder porn for <laughs> stuff of it. Yeah, yeah. I, it's not that. I mean, it's bad, but I won't I'll, I won't call it murder porn. It's not like Saw. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's 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 violent. It's very wouldn't, violent. I wouldn't give you shit for saying murder porn. I, <laughs> it it's pretty. It's yeah. It's it it glorifies it a little bit, but at the same time, the whole purpose of the game is to kind of acknowledge how gratuitous it is. It's yeah, not yeah. doing it for the sake of look how cool this is, right? Even though like the direct, like yeah, the director's saying that is, but he's do, but he's evil. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The person that's glorifying this is the villain of the game, so that's yeah. how it kind of. You yeah. can get away with it in my it's book. Really, all about how you like interpret the game, I guess. You know, because it could just be, you know, just senseless murder to somebody, but it could just be, you know, a uh, you know a feeling of struggle to get through it. You know, what I mean that that's what makes it so great. Is just like you're just like I guess you can call James like a, a piece of shit. You know, the whole time you're like, man, I'm just like piece of shit character doing awful things, and that's why it's hard to get through, which is a feeling that a lot of other games don't give you you know that's an interesting i've never met someone who likes to play like you said you like the anti-hero yeah i i, I don't want to say like i like playing pieces of shit but <laughs> no, that's kind of like how it was phrased but like yeah, it, yeah, um yeah. no but i get what you're saying like you yeah. you like someone who like is doing awful things but for a reason that exactly. you can understand and it's supposed to bring that feeling out of you you know like that that's the point of it, you know. Yeah. And then like it just kinda sucks that like this kind of, this game gets just gets like shit on for being just this ultra violent, you know. I mean it, not, is, it, it, it is it ultra is, violent, but, but it, like you're missing the point of it. Exactly. And additionally, yeah. for people who complain about that stuff, it is rated M. There yeah, is yeah. a rating it's like, seventeen. You're up, not supposed so. to play this until you're seventeen, yeah, technically. Yeah. And if the parent allow if the, <laughs> if the parent allows it, then yeah, it's their yeah. own fault. Then it's their fault, yeah. I but, turned out uh, fine though. So yeah, yeah, you haven't murdered anyone, nope. so you're good. No, I'm all good. But all right, so let's wrap this thing up. Uh, right, before man. I give any shout outs and everything, one thank you for coming onto the episode, Mike. Oh, of course, it was fun. Um, do you have any shout outs you want to give? Anything you want to promote? Anything like that? Any social media things you want to? Nah, promote? I, I don't use social media. No, so, yeah, not at all. I wish I did. Wish I had something cool to say. Uh, I, whatever. I, I seldom post my shit because I really never know what to say. Mm-hmm. But uh, in any case, all right. So shout outs for me. Uh, you can. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Still Loading Pod on all of them. If you want to email me, you can email me at Still Loading Contact at gmail.com. Also, don't forget, I have a website now, Still Loading Podcast.com. You can reach out to me there. Um, also, please remember to rate, review, and to subscribe, especially on iTunes. It really helps get the word out for more people to find the show that maybe, you know, don't uh, always listen to, you know, maybe they're just looking for video game stuff that helps people find it more easily. Um, and sh- uh, shout outs to some of my friends, Apex and the Abyss, Two Guys in the Games, The Hotter Show, uh, The Amazing Nerd Show, Drinks with Larry. Uh, I'm not friends with them yet, but I'd like to be the Super Mark Hotter Brothers and the Singing Mountain podcast. Like, all these shows are fantastic, guys. Definitely go listen to all of them. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I, I just wanted to kind of run through the shout outs somewhat quickly because I usually go into so much detail otherwise. But uh, yeah, so thank you all once again for listening and I will see you all next time.